TypeScript 5.5 RC was just announced a few days ago, and in this video, I'm gonna show you the five features that I am excited about. Now, definitely check out the blog post that goes into everything, but the first thing I'm excited about is inferred type predicates. So let's see a code example. So let's say you have a map here that's pulling in some data that could actually be either a string or undefined. And so the result of this map is string or undefined. We then want to get rid of those undefined, so we filter them out. We basically say, if it's undefined, get rid of it. And now the return of this filter will be a list that only has strings inside of it. But you can see that the inferred type right now is string or undefined array. And so later on, if I try to use it, we're going to get a type error that says user is possibly undefined. Now with the latest version of TypeScript, it's able to see this and infer it as a type predicate. And the return value of this function is now an array of strings instead of an array of string or undefined. And so our code down below no longer gets a type error. Now, the way that this is working, like I said, is with type predicates. So if you're new to that, I'm going to link the handbook so you can read more about it. And if you look at the blog post, they have the specific rules that you need to follow in order for your code to be detected as a type predicate in order for this feature to work. Now, next up is control flow narrowing for constant index accesses. Uh, let me show you what this entails. So let's say you're working on an app and maybe you are trying to format specific um, properties on some kinds of objects. And so here I have a product that can have a title or a price, but you can see both of them could possibly be undefined. And then down here, I'm calling my format function, I'm passing in that product, and then I'm passing in the specific prop of the thing that I want to format. Now, if we look at the function implementation, first we make sure that that value actually exists inside the product, right? Because both title and price could be undefined. So we make that check. Then we check to see if it's a string, we wanna to call to uppercase. So this is like our, our formatter function in this case. Then if it's a number, we wanna call to fixed. But you can see right here, TypeScript still thinks that this could be a string or a number, and that's because we're using bracket notation right here. So it, it wasn't smart enough to be able to look past that bracket notation to understand what the inferred type should be. But in the latest version of TypeScript, you will see that now we don't get that error anymore. And basically it's able to infer the type using bracket notation. So it narrows the type to see that it's not undefined. It narrows the type to see that it's a string. And then right here, we can call to uppercase because it is a string. And here we can call to fix because it is a number. Definitely check out the PR that talks about uh, different use cases and also shows how they implemented this because it's pretty cool. And I'm excited about that. Now, another thing coming is type imports in JS doc. So before, if you ever use JS doc, you typically would have to have like a direct import inside of your JS doc comments because you don't want to have a full import because that would include it, get, in, get included in your bundle. And so what you often have is a code base where if a specific module is importing from multiple things and it's JS doc, you have imports in multiple places. Now you could wrap that up to type def, but that also gets repetitive. With the latest version of TypeScript, they've introduced the at import comment tag. So now you can actually import a full library in your JS doc and then just use that thing inside of your JS doc comments. And so you can do named imports, you can do namespace imports, it's all supported here. And that's definitely gonna clean up some JS doc. So I'm excited about that. Now, the next thing I'm excited about is support for new ECMAScript set methods. Now, if you didn't know, Set methods for JavaScript is already a stage four proposal for ECMAScript, so it's already been merged in. It will be in the latest version of ECMAScript released this year, but you get a bunch of methods for doing set operations. And uh, if you're not familiar with these, definitely check out the MDN article. It has some visual representations of what these set methods do, but this is pretty exciting because now we have the type definitions for them, we can use them in TypeScript, and if you like doing code challenges, these are gonna be very useful for uh, things like leak code or code wars where you very often have to do uh, like set operations. And the last thing I'm super excited about that's definitely gonna clean up some code bases is the configure template variable in configuration files. So with TypeScript, typically you might have in a, in a mono repo, you might have a base config that you define somewhere. And then all of your other projects in the mono repo extend from that base config. But one of the issues with that is if there are any folder paths in that base config, these are all relative to the base config, so they have to be overridden in your subprojects. Now, the base config can use this config dir template variable, and this will be relative to where the uh, base config is being extended from. So you define it like this in your base config, and now anywhere that extends it, these file paths will be relative to the file that is extending it. And so this is gonna definitely clean up some TS configs because very often you had to basically have duplicate declarations in your base config and in your project configs. All right, that's it for the stuff that I'm excited about. Definitely check out the blog post to see the rest of the things that are coming to TypeScript 5.5. And if you're curious when you can use it, you can check out their iteration plan. Right now, the planned release is June 18th. That could change, uh, but it's looking 
like we're about a week away from being able to use this in your production code bases, which is pretty exciting. All right, that's all I have in this video. I'll see you in the next one.